We've got some hey, fresh new I'm Luis. Talent and I'm Luis. You and you're listening before. to the Content One, is Profit two, Podcast. Listen. What up, Fonsi? Welcome back to Content is Profit, everybody. All right. It's Wednesday hump day. Yeah, yeah, I'm feeling it. Good music. Look at that. I I do not know what I just put in there, so <laughs> we'll see. Maybe we're down for a surprise. We should do a radio radio show. But anyways, big news coming, guys. This week, we've been working on a very big announcement. I can't wait to, to do it. It looks like it's going to it's gonna move forward. We'll see. Tonight, we have a meeting. And then I cannot wait. I cannot wait to make it official. I cannot wait either. It's going to be very exciting. Everybody's like, what's happening, Luis? What's happening? Well, we cannot just say anything right, just right now. And Stay we tuned. Have to Come wait. back to the next episode. And hopefully, we have some, you know, we'll have some news in there. It's, it's some, deve like, some development, but probably we'll, we'll have a... 100% answer probably by next week. It's, hopefully. I know. It's probably one of the biggest things that we've worked on. Yeah. It'll be fun. Yeah. All right. Anyways, uh, straight to the topic. Fonzie, what do you bring us today? Today, we're going to be talking about growing your audience and influence with these three collaboration strategies. Uh, this sounds absolutely amazing. Hashtag we, juicy juicy. Not lost, just because I put it together. <laughs> we, we just lost everybody that don't collab doesn't collaborate. Yeah. Before uh, actually be, before we collaborate, <laughs> I, I want to add this as a caveat, right? Like it's not everything you need to do, but if you are under a certain level of audience, even if you're on a even if you have a big audience, I would encourage you to collaborate. But specifically for people that might be looking for that growth, might be uh, creating for a while now, uh, they haven't experienced some sort of growth. This is extremely helpful, especially too if you're looking to monetize your business, your services, right? Your offers. This can be extremely beneficial. So, yeah. is it everything you need to do? No. Again, balance, test, right? Do some solo content. You got to be the expert, but at the same time, leverage these collaboration strategies yeah. we're going to be sharing today. And I want to encourage everybody that, you know, maybe is rolling out collaboration, maybe take a listen. And uh, it might be like one or two uh, things that you can bring on to your current publishing strategy. I think it's going to be useful. Uh, it has changed our life and uh, the, the, the way that we do things. So hopefully it will move you a little bit closer to your objectives with content. All right. Yeah. So first, why collaboration? Why is it important, right? And I'm going to nail it. Just going to put it down to two simple things that have really changed our business. One is relationships. It's going to allow you to build personal and business relationships that are going to go beyond that one-time collaboration. Now, every time we go to events, we had a network of people that we can tap into. If we have some challenges, we have a network of people we can tap into. If we need referrals, we have a network of people that we can tap into, which leads to the second aspect, which is opportunities. Just knowing more people and talking about what you do, how you help others, right? Your service, your offer is going to lead to those people potentially, right? Referring you to others, or if they know somebody that might have a challenge that you are solving, they can introduce you to them and et cetera. Yeah. So I wanna, it boils down to two relationships. I want to add a little bit of a, of a layer to those things that you said, right? Like uh, before we actually started collaborating over for us specifically on the podcast, but this can be, like I said, in any platform, it was really challenging to tell like, is this a person that I can actually trust, right? Is this a person that um, the personality or maybe the way that they operate resonates with how we operate and how we do things, right? And is this a person that can inspire me, right? It can be challenging, right? Because sometimes what we see online is not 100% yep. of the time. So the fact that we were able to build a very genuine uh, relationship with so many of the guests inside of our platform and then mm -hmm. after it, right, there's some, that, there's some stuff that happens after the show, uh, not only on like that immediate call, but like throughout the, the next few months, yeah. Uh, it's pretty awesome, right? You meet them in person and there's going to be some people that you resonate with and there's going to be some other people that don't resonate with. And I didn't really understand like how important that is when it comes to business. When we first started, we're like, we want to be doing business with every single person, right? And uh, I remember like one case specifically is a, a person, they, they were never on the show, but we collaborated with them in, a, in an event. They came and they started bringing some uh, some clients to us. And I remember we started with 
two very amazing entrepreneurs, right? And then the way that they operated on the back end, the way that they communicated, it didn't res resonate with how how we did it. And then, you know, that was a working relationship. We're still on a personal relationship. I think we're in good terms, right? But at the end of the day, it was not beneficial for the business, right? And we would not discover this if it wasn't for the previous collaboration that that we did, right? So yeah. um, I think that's a that's a, another an, a little bit of an extra layer and uh that i want to put in there yeah i think personally the moment that i realized the power of relationships and increasing the value of your network was actually when we were starting content is profit before that we weren't doing anything similar to you know collaboration strategies and then when we started content is profit that we started bringing guests one of the first people that we brought was our coach at the moment right we were paying him a uh, pretty fairly amount of money. <laughs> and we were like, why not? You know, I'm sure he's going to say yes to come to a podcast that has no audience whatsoever. And he came, we deepened the relationship, but also then we got to leverage his name with other people. And we managed to get bigger guests because they knew who he was. So that kind of like turned on a light bulb. It was like, wow, the power of collaboration goes beyond, hey, you're going to be my friend, but also that of building authority, right? Which we're yeah. going to be talking a little bit more in depth here in a little bit. So let's go with the three strategies. Number one is sharing the spotlight, right? Usually most businesses, most people that are creating online, they're just focused on their own work. Me, 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 this is what I can do for you, right? And yes, there is a percentage of your content that should be like that, especially if you're trying to position yourself as the expert. You need to have your own frameworks, your own right proprietary uh, intellectual things that you put out into the world, right? And, and that is going to frame you as the expert. But at the same time, collaboration, right? Like putting other people into the spotlight is going to allow you to, again, not only promote their content, but also show people how good you can potentially distill other ideas and then turn them into your own while at the same time potentially leveraging these people sharing your content. So yeah. why don't you share maybe how we used to do that with Content is Profit at the very beginning? Well, uh, I mean, for once, I remember having a conversation on Friday. These are, uh, they're a pretty big company and they, they do two podcasts a week. And uh, to them, I mean, they published more than 150 episodes. And to them, this was a very foreign idea, right? They, they came to us because they wanted to learn a little bit more about the networks that we were involved, the people that we brought onto the show. Uh, they want to develop a little bit more relationships. And I'm like, well, you already have a, an amazing show that, that you can use as this. And to them, that was brand new. And they got so excited to go back and, and go. And this is not a short anymore. It's like we're actually, you know, moving a step closer to the relationships that we want to yeah. build with certain people. Right. So we ended up the call was supposed to be 20 minutes. We ended up talk, talking about 90 minutes around this topic. And then they're going to be coming to our show. We're going to be coming to their show. And value is created, right? Like, for, but for us, I remember the first twenty episodes. It was just you know, me, me and you, and we were trying to document the things that we were doing. Um, and after Steve came onto the show, uh, right after we started having questions of people like, "Well, what what do you guys do?" Like, I, I really enjoy this this interview, and the these questions naturally led to to the next stages. Um, and some of them, you know, turn out into referrals. Some of them turn yeah. into opportunities. We went on and spoke on stages. Right. And, uh, and it's like, well, this is, this is really amazing because it's happening naturally with the people that we actually resonate with. And they are actually asking us, what do we do? This is an opportunity we cannot let go. And how can we systemize this? How we can build a system around that we can actually build relationships at scale consistently over the last three years. And that's, kind of like where we saw the the secret sauce when it comes to publishing like this. Yeah. So, I mean, that that aligns with the next point that we're going to be talking about. Uh, I'm, I'm going to back up one second and give you maybe two ways that you can share other people's spotlight in your own platform, right? Besides, obviously, hosting them. Again, like my brother was sharing, you can break down somebody else's work. So something that I personally like to do is when I'm listening to a podcast and I take a snippet out of their podcast, something that I learned, one viable lesson, Maybe I write something about that and I tag them, right? I do a H slash T with, uh, which means hat tip, kind of like, hey, thank you so much for this information, right? And I go like, hey, here are three things I learned from this person podcast. One, two, three, right? You're debriefing, you're condensing their information, their knowledge, and you're sharing it with more people, right? And 
then there's a potential chance that they might actually, if it's a quality piece of content, if it's something good that they enjoyed, they might share with their audience as well, giving you some reach. Yeah. And if they don't share it, that could be just a touch point, right? Again, let's say you're trying to get this person on your podcast. You start doing these snippets. Those are touch points. So trust me, they're going to get notifications that you're tagging them, that you're creating content around them. Yeah. And then eventually when you reach out to them, they're like, you know what? I've actually seen your content. You've been publishing about me and my stuff now for quite some time. Absolutely. Let's talk, right? You're building some rapport in there. Yeah. I mean, and I want to add maybe a couple of tactical moves here, right? Like one is uh, utilize or publish uh, your debrief and your own thoughts about that thing of the person that you want to connect with in the platform that they actually use, right? Uh, if somebody's active on Instagram, don't go ahead and publish it on TikTok. It might be less of a chance for them to see it. So like, where yeah. are where are they, right, in, uh, using their time? Here's a quick tactic. Uh, turn on notifications when they're actually posting. And as soon as something comes out where like on your phone it shows, hey, this person is actually posting, go ahead and publish and tag them in that moment. They're in that phone, right? Of course, like if you don't have anything ready, it's not gonna happen, but the, I would recommend this. Like what are your top three dream relationships that you want and uh, continue to do it? We've done it with the people, for example, with uh, Todd Brown. I remember it, amazing marketer, right? Like you were finishing reading his book and as soon as he posted, I think you did a story about the book. I think it was a PDF that you ended up downloading. He ended up seeing that, communicating with us, sending us a copy and then coming into our show. And that was like the very first like massive, incredible uh, uh, guest that we had in, in the industry at the time. So we're like, wow, this is really, really exciting. Yeah. So let's move on to the next one. Host collaborations or interviews. Uh, surprise, surprise. Of course, uh, like my brother was saying, that's what we do in content is profit or what we used to do. Pretty much for like 300 episodes, it was mostly just interviews. Then we started adding more solo episodes. Again, we want to obviously establish yourself as the experts, but we still do collaborations. We still do interviews. We do maybe live on Facebook, in our Facebook group. And the whole idea is to be able to tap into their audiences, what is called OPA, right? OPA, other people's audiences. Also, this allows you to borrow authority. If you're interviewing somebody like or coach, the first story that we share with you, right? Somebody that he is very influential in a community of marketers. Guess what? When people see us alongside, they're going to be like, who are these guys, right? Like immediately their perception of authority and trust goes higher. Now, you do need to prove your authority once people start going into your profile and see that you've been consistent and creating a topic and showing your expertise. But it is a great way to, again, get in front of a new audience, borrow that authority and trust. And our very favorite is the fact that it creates opportunities. I mean, just recently we had amazing Chris, right, from, from London and with that incredible accent, right? And I think next Monday we're going to be at a live event uh, with AppSumo, right? And it's going to be incredible. We've been promoting with him. The, the, you know, we've put up with amazing entrepreneurs and, and people that in the in the industry. And that's a great opportunity, you know, for us to show that, that you know, we, we got it. Also, you know, he came into our platform. He did some trainings inside of our group that was very, very valuable for our community. And I think, you know, that's, that's where it gets like pretty fun, right? Where it's like, hey, how can we collaborate? How can we help each other out, right? We're, we live in a world of abundance, and the more people that we're connecting, that means that there might be like two, three, four opportunities down the road. This very big thing that we're working on this week that came out of nowhere, Literally. right? We're going to share this story. But this was a relationship that started first in the place that we used to work, you know, the, the office that we rented. And then the, he was a guest in our show for a while. And mm -hmm. we developed this relationship for the last three years. And when we actually announced the thing, it's going to blow people's minds. This is probably yeah. a very interesting deal that came out of uh, in the back of building the relationships through the platform, right? So again, yep. invest the time, make sure that you stay in contact with these people. Like I said, through the filters, like, is this valuable for us, for the audience, for me as a person? Do we resonate as people, right? There, there, there have been some guests that the content has been great, but maybe we don't resonate and that's okay. They're still friends, right? There's still yeah. people that we know and we can reach out to any, any not, single time. Not everybody has to be a home run, right? <laughs> exactly. And the last one, number three, is be a connector. And shout out here to a good friend, <laughs> the Pablo, the Pablo. Pablo Gonzalez. Yes. And, you know, he often says that being the kingmaker is better than being the king, right? And it's just this is an invitation for you to consider just making introductions 
when things look right, right? You are growing your network through collaborations. Guess what? You can help other people do the same thing. And by you introducing them to maybe a potential solution, a new client, et cetera, right? And increase their network, you're getting immediately like credit for that, right? People are going to see you as this person that is like, wow, thanks to you, I'm getting X, Y, and C. You are... Um, I forgot the word. Uh, it's like a, a, an enabler, right? You're an enabler of good things yeah. for others. So make sure now that you're growing your network through collaborations, make sure that you can make some meaningful connections. And, and don't just like spam introductions because that is honestly, that is kind of annoying. And I would also, my recommendation would be to check with both people. When if, hey, I have this person that might be a good introduction for you. They do X, Y, and C. Would you be interested in getting to know yeah. them? Do that with both people. If they say yes, go ahead and introduce them. But don't be just like throwing random introductions yeah. out of the air I mean, like just, that. Just Sunday, right? We had a, a amazing also guest of the show, Alex and Filippo, right? With yeah. Podbatch. And we had dinner with him and, and his wife. And they're crushing it in the industry. And they're building a new technology uh, a new a new technology or a new tool, right, for, for the industry that's going to change everything. And it's pretty incredible. And uh, mm -hmm. we happened to meet this amazing person in a location that we used to record uh, content and work out of. And he's also a tech founder, and he finances this amazing building and community center in our town. So, you know, we email both of them. We're like, hey, I think this is a great fit for you guys. Hey, happy connecting. Go ahead. You do your thing. And they're already having a, a meeting on the technology tool, right? So, again, yep. uh you can, these are great opportunities to put, to put good karma out into the world and he's going to come back tenfold to you, right? So I remember when Pablo um, told us about this phrase, like, you know, be a, a kingmaker is better than being a king, right? And, yeah, and we're, we're probably butchering the phrase a little bit. Yeah. So sorry about that, Pablo. Uh, <laughs> but, but it goes along those lines. But I remember we were with a group of people and uh, I saw, I literally physically saw all the egos rise, right? Because there were people that were authorities in, in their fields and, and people that are, you know, publishing for quite a while. And they're like, absolutely not. Like, I have to be the authority. Like, this is my platform. This is my thing. And that really got me thinking, right? Like for a lot of people, right? Like, are we ready to actually share our platform? Which is okay if you're going to be doing your solo episodes, totally okay. But can we allow some space for this collaboration, right? What about you're a king that also is an amazing kingmaker, right? And I think you both can live in the same space, right? The, the king of kingmakers. The kings of kingmakers. <laughs> no, but I, 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 I speak from, from the truth, right? Because when we heard this phrase, we were very early in our podcasting uh, journey, right? So what, how we were tackling these conversations was from a, maybe from a, a lower point than where the person that was coming to a show was, authority-wise. Yeah. And after starting to think about it, we're like, okay, can we uh, show up? at the same level as that, as that person that's coming to our show and not just have some questions, but also put our thoughts out there and, uh, and, uh, our, and, uh, and question maybe some of the things that they're doing based on our experience, based on our life, based on the things that we've, that we've experienced and then have a conversation as equals. And I think that's a huge difference, right? Because you still can be the king, right? With your own opinion and your own thought process and your own intellectual property. But at the same time, you are making a king on the other side, because you're presenting your, your platform and you guys are having these amazing conversations. So I think that's where the difference is. A lot of people tackle the interview, right? Um, it might be an internal thing, right? For us, it was definitely an internal thing. I yeah. remember uh, Fonzie calling uh, Todd Brown, Mr. Todd. And that I think that was a day that we realized. I think I, think I was still calling Mr. Todd, you know, it's a sign, <laughs> a sign of respect. Hey, Mr. Todd. I know it's like his or his panic parents are like, Mr. <laughs> and Mrs. Uh, but anyways, um, I think today was super awesome. What do you think, Fonzie? Super duper awesome. Super duper yeah. awesome. <laughs> Absolutely viable. Again, if you have a small audience, this is a great way to leverage other people's audiences. Lean into this. Even, even, I'll say this because we've been doing it for a while and actually, let's say our social media following hasn't grown significantly, but our network has grown massively and the results in our business are all due to that to the fact that we have collaborated and done these interviews and build relationships every single dollar pretty much that we've done in our business can be tracked back to the platform to podcast so again use collaborations it is an incredible tool i think it is definitely undervalued by most people especially once you start calling scrolling on reels and you see that there's just a lot of people kind of like just trying to push their own me, 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 I'm the expert, which again, there's nothing wrong about that, but I think a good balance is necessary. 
Awesome. All right. I think that's the episode, guys. Thank you so much for tuning to the Contents Profit Podcast. Go ahead and follow the show in your favorite podcasting platform and on social media at this Bros Co. That is right. If today's episode helped you move one step closer towards your goal, please don't forget to share this with somebody else and and leave a five-star review. And if you want to know more about this and how to launch your own, make sure you tell us about the pipeline platform. Just be like, yo, send me a DM. Here you go. Pipeline platforms. Tell me more. I want it. Yeah. All right, cool. See ya. Bye, guys. <laughs> Thank you.